Welcome back to the Gotanium Show. Recently, we talked about patching your ugly sweater and where we've made significant improvements in Linux patch. But today, we want to actually talk about the bigger story of Linux and Tanium. How can you get the visibility and control across all those different distros, all the different environments that you have going with Linux, even some snowflakes out there, right? How can you see all that and manage it quickly and easily from the Tanium console? So today's episode is called Power to the Penguins. Yes. And with me on the show today, I have none other than a Tam on my team whose name is Charles Champion. Charles, introduce yourself. Yeah, hey. Um, yeah, Charles Champion. I've um, been a technical account manager with Tanium here for going over five years. Uh, focused a lot on the non-Windows and Linux side of things. Uh, kind of done that along with my career, even had some time at Microsoft doing some non-Windows work there. Um, and just uh, been kind of focused on Linux my entire career. And yeah, looking forward to talking to you today. All right. So, Charles, we support a lot of different distros for Linux. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to share my screen here. So here's our public docs. Remember docs.team.com, my favorite website. On there, you'll find a list of all of our distros. Uh, Charles, you want to talk us through these different Linux flavors? Yeah, absolutely. And you can kind of see at the top that we support uh, some of the you know more uh, – the cloud Linux flavor, Amazon Linux there. And we got our Debian based uh, Linux flavors as well, Debian Ubuntu, which you'll see later on alphabetically. And then of course our Red Hat uh, based operating systems, including our RPM based Red, uh, operating systems, including Red Hat, CentOS, Oracle, um, and OpenSUSE and SUSE and Linux Enterprise Server are all kind of covered out of the box. So the ones that you, you know don't see here, maybe they're a little bit older or maybe they're uh, not the more familiar widely uh, use distributions, maybe they are Debian based, RPM based. They, you know, it's not to say they wouldn't work, but uh, you know, these are the ones that we're supporting and testing on our side. So. Okay, so I know you and I were talking earlier. What if I've got a flavor that's not on there, like oh, it's just for fun in my lab? Let's say I've got Linux Mint or something. You know, mm -hmm. what what about other distros? Would they yeah, work? Say, yeah, absolutely, they will uh, work. Um, and you know, we we like to do what we can to to offer the the best effort there. Uh, and I I like to use a Gen two example where we had a customer that had a good you know, a large sampling of Gen two machines, uh, and they were just kind of curious about can they use Tanium to monitor those. And really, it just comes down to the library dependencies. You know, if it's a common library set, which they always are, uh, our client's going to use that common library set, the you know C runtime library, and it just needs to be the same version that we were compiled against in a lot of cases, you know, cases they are, and it's very portable in that sense. So yeah, it works in a lot of cases. And I've had um, some machines uh, show up in my uh, Git computer name output that um, in operating system that definitely are not the officially supported flavor of Linux. And a lot of cases, I mean, we, we've helped customers work through those kind of challenges with the lesser known or lesser used uh, versions of Linux out there. Um, and what we find is those customers typically are in the process of migrating to something that is more widely supported. Um, so usually it's, it's a kind of a temporary solution as they kind of use Tanium to understand what they need to move away from and, you know, get that whole visibility and control over things that are, like you said, snowflakes out in their environment and bring them back into that uh, realm of, um, you know, compliance. Mm -hmm. So you managed, uh, mentioned some best practices that we were, uh, as we were prepping for the show, you said that you guys on the Linux client side, we do kind of stick to best practices, including uh, we even run as root. Maybe talk to some of those, uh, the way the yeah. client behaves on the endpoint. And yeah, you say best practice and run as root together. And, and depending on which side of the, the Linux fence you may find yourself on, maybe you feel that that's not the case. Oh, none of my applications should run as, you know, root unless um, they absolutely need to. And that's absolutely the case here with Tanium, the level of reporting we're providing. And uh, again, that visibility and control is typically going to require a root user. And that's why we require root. And we're going to follow those best practices. Uh, we run in user space, not in kernel space. So there's a big distinction there. We're not going to, you know, do anything that should c cause the machine a kernel panic or a crash on its own. You know, if anything, the kernel can target us and, and stop our client process. Um, you know, some people have out of, uh, you know, out of memory management uh, applications that will target non-critical applications. And, you know, I've seen Tiny M client get killed by those, and it doesn't mess up a machine to, you know, 
because of those best practices that we follow. So we support lots of dist distros. So mm -hmm. the next question would be, then how do people install or deploy Tanium? Do they use Puppet, Chef, Ansible? Where, where do they go to deploy it? It's, so over the past uh, five years of Tanium, I've definitely seen Ansible. I've seen Chef used. We've learned that um, you know customers managing Tanium uh, in a detect and fix manner is not necessarily the best method, but uh, using those tools to at least lay the bits down always seems to work out well. So however you can get the bits out there, once the bits, you know, the Tanium bits are deployed, then it's always been easy for us to maintain the client. And we can talk more about client upgrade uh, here in a little bit. But uh, now what's even better with the, you know, most recent version of Tanium and our Tanium client management feature, we can just do that right from the console. Uh, yeah, show us what you got. Yeah, absolutely. Let me show that off. And I'm just going to share out my Chrome interface. All right, so here I'm logged into one of my... Um, environments and this isn't even you know kind of the one I keep on the the latest and greatest here but we have uh, our client management shared service under client management uh, you know you can define some client settings uh, credentials and it will make those client settings and credentials into what we call deployment and that deployment I then targeted to um, you know my uh, Red Hat 8 machine that an uh, Ubuntu machine that I have out there and you can drill down into these and see like okay so right from within the team console now I've defined the client settings I want to send out, you know, if I want to use so much for logging or nothing for logging. Um, and then the credentials that should be able to log into that machine. Uh, and hopefully, you know, these are you know, trusted targets and not something that you're going to have a mixed uh, bag of machines that you don't want to just willy nilly target, uh, you know, obviously, credentials at an untrusted machine. Uh, and that's why we give you the option to specify a single IP, subnet range, DNS, and uh, so on and so forth. And then out of all the machines that you target, you'll get this list and kind of a log of each that it went through and uh, what it was able to do as far as that deployment. So this has come a long way from back having to depend on you know, third-party tools to do this for us. Now we're able to do it right here in the console and even troubleshoot uh, when things don't go well. Yeah, I was playing with this with a Mac machine in my lab the other day, which is, you know, half Linux anyway. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, it was beautiful. It, it would give you all that console output from the install. So I've got all these distros. I get a team client on there. And you mentioned that we can upgrade it as well. How do we do that? Yeah, so for the upgrade, um, we have some uh, content, uh, kind of the client upgrade content that I do, basically we have a manifest that's able to be downloaded and then and use that manifest to automatically pull that through the Tanium architecture and push that out to the clients. And then the client realizes, like, I'm on client version X and client version Y is now the latest. Uh, if you configure it to do so, it will automatically update itself in place and uh, bring itself up to, you know, the, the best GA supported client that maybe you approve it to um, or that uh, you want it to. You can manipulate that upgrade client any way you kind of want, like do it just the single version or have it maintain itself. Yeah, I've used that a little bit with some of my customers. And it's really clever the way it works, and it's really robust. I mean, it'll you just point one Tanium package at any Linux flavor, and it'll figure out what flavor it is, download the right installer, and upgrade it. It's it's beautiful. To watch it work. Yeah, I think I think it's broken out into to non Windows altogether. So it's it's that smart across you know not just Linux, but you know even AX and Solaris, which is uh, can be you know areas of struggle for. Uh, some other non-Windows discussions. <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about then, I've got it deployed and installed, so what can I do with it now, now that it's on the box? So we've got this feature matrix in the public mm -hmm. docs, and I'm gonna have at the bottom of the show notes, you should see here on the YouTube channel, in the description, you'll have a link to all these pages that you can check out later. But Charles, can you just briefly talk us through, we've got Absolutely. some green check marks here where Linux is supported across their modules, but there's also some reds and oranges. Yeah, and, uh, so I'll highlight the greens, of course, at first, and you can see uh, across the, you know, most of our, our kind of heavy hitting modules asset, um, which, you know, you're collecting you know, inventory data about the endpoint, comply, you can scan for compliance and vulnerabilities. You can deploy things to Linux versions. Uh, you can discover Linux machines and run discoveries from Linux machines. If you only have a couple of Linux machines on a subnet, you can look at that subnet and discover those machines from there and uh, even feed that, um, you know, use that list to target machines in the client management to deploy the client to. Um, and then even down in reveal and threat response, um, you know, we got full support there and integrity monitor. So, I mean, we have a lot of the risk stuff uh, with feature, rich feature parity across uh, Linux. Uh, as we do with Windows. Uh, where you see the red X's come in, end user notifications. Um, that's very much a specific to Windows kind of function where the end user's logged in 
um, and they get a pop-up saying, hey, you need to reboot or you have an update or a uh, patch to deploy or um, you know, application to install. Um, you know, typically people aren't going to be logged in uh, first person using uh, Linux machines. Um, and, you know, we've seen some kind of push uh, for desktop use on Linux machines, uh, even more maybe recently, but still not in an enterprise use and being feedback driven like we are from customers. We just haven't gotten a, a customer request for that kind of end user notification that I'm aware of. Uh, so that being said, uh, that's one of the reasons you see the red X there. And, um, and the other things that, uh, you know, are kind of showing moderate that's uh, like the in-between, that's where patch. So patch is, you know, fully supported on Red Hat and RPM based operating systems. But uh, Debian-based operating system is still like a roadmap item, for example. And, you know, that's why you'll see kind of some mixed uh, um, variables between those uh, modules. It's just, you know, it's, it's just there's so many distributions on Linux and so many different processes to follow. We want to make sure we do it the right way on each of those distributions. Mm -hmm. I know Enforce also has some, uh, it'll do like some IP table type management things, but it's and not a firewall. Mean yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we do have some actually, you know, if you, if you don't look at the red for just a second, I mean, we do have some really broad use case support across the Linux uh, feature matrix here mm -hmm. for things that you may uh, not have capabilities with today, or maybe they're there, but take a lot more effort than just a simple, uh, you know, with a speed scale visibility control we give you in the Tanium console. So, yeah. So once I get, uh, Metanium agent out there, online Linux machines. I've got all these modules I can take advantage of. Why don't we just look at the console itself? Can you show us what are some like things that I would ask of Linux machines in the Tanium console? Yeah, absolutely. So um, some of this, uh, I'll show out uh, another one of my environments here. Um, give me just a moment. And this environment here is uh, kind of one of my uh, more heavily used dev environments. And uh, I have some Linux dashboards that I kind of put together for customers. And then, you know, some of it's comprised of just like regular inventory dashboards that we have, like, you know, the regular saved questions that you could ask. You can ask of your um, Linux machines. And some of them may apply, some of them might not, like Microsoft software, obviously. That's why I put together like some Linux specific dashboards um, for like Linux inventory. And so, you know, if I drill into Linux inventory, really I'm just taking some of those existing questions and adding is Linux true to the end of those and creating my own saved question set and dashboards. And um, one of the things that I, uh, you know, did for other customers is uh, maybe more along the lines of custom content. And custom content, uh, for those maybe not aware, it's just, um, you know, you, you know, you're able to use shell and, and Python interpreters on Linux um, kind of out of the box to do pretty much anything you can do at the command line. Uh, if you can get something back, you know, sub-second, that could be like a sensor that we're feeding in data here, just like that. And so one of the sub-second things that we were able to do as um, kind of maybe not out of the box at Itanium uh, was, you know, customer wanted to know how many root users do I have? How many sudoer users do I have out there? And there, I'll just go back home and I'll just click on my escalation privileges. And so this is kind of what you can do with the custom content where, you know, just basically looking for UID zero and Etsy password and listen out the users. And I mean, that's not any, any, anything complicated by any means, it's just regular little chill script. So that's definitely anything you can do at the command line. We can put in this console. We can take action through packages. So things that aren't sub second, you, know, you can create the packages and actions to either go and, you know, create a data set for you to look at using this method, or maybe they're actually taking some remediation steps or inflicting change on the endpoint. And, you know, that's where we try to make it easy for you using Tanium Deploy and Tanium Patch to have that workflow built out for you. So is the sudo users, is that, or sudo, is that a built-in sensor or something you wrote? That is something I put together for customers, uh, you know, through different uh, POCs. And, um, like, I've kind of added some feedback um, in a way, I look at the Etsy sudoers file for customers to make it a little bit more accurate. This is ones that just have root level permissions. So there's a different way you can assign permissions in sudoers, but um, my, this is more like root centric. Mm -hmm. So when you write custom content, where do you, you do that in Bash shell or Python or what do you? I'm finding it very difficult to get away from Bash shell, but I've been doing a lot more in Pythons just because of the, I mean, honestly, there's uh, for anything that's a heavy lifting data set operation, I love Python for, and I can, you know, do, um, you know, more parsing in like at the sensor level in Python. Mm -hmm. I would have to, you know, offload to a package and previously doing shell code. Uh, so I love that. Um, and I'll just pull up, you know, for those that maybe that haven't seen um, uh, the content and kind of how that looks. But uh, 
you know, I obviously I don't write the content here in the Tanium console um, um, for the different sensors here. But um, one of the things that, you know, it, that's probably a whole nother subject, but, you know, it's just fairly easy to uh, bring in this. Uh, let me pull in one of these that maybe is, sorry, the zoom window is right in the way. Thank you. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> and as you can see, this is just, um, some, you know, scripts that we can run right out of here. And we have a definition for every uh, platform. So this is just a, like I said, a little basic suitor script that I had put in here and expanded it based on some feedback. Uh, some just a little basic script. That's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, it looks uh, to the uninitiated that looks uh, quite uh more than a basic script, but it looks like you've got some good stuff going there. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah. All right, well, we're just running out of time here on the show. I, I will make a one plug. In the future, I do plan to have a whole show based on custom content uh, with Rory, our guy who's all about custom content. And there's a class that I'll put in the show notes as well. If you wanna uh, find out the, uh, you can ask your team more about how to get that training. That's good stuff. So, I'm gonna hit, watch that one. Yeah. <laughs> And it's web-based too, so you can uh, watch that on demand. It'll be good. So, Charles, you've told us how to get visibility and control of our Linux endpoints with the speed and scale of Tanium, and you showed us how easy it was to deploy and upgrade clients from the console as well as what modules are supported, what content's there. And, and then not only that, you can write your own shell scripts to deploy to uh, get that visibility to see things or take control of endpoints with stuff that you already know and just automated at scale here in Tanium. So uh, thanks for taking us through this tour today, Charles, of the Absolutely. Linux Tanium world. And then, Pleasure. yeah, thank you. So uh, wrapping things up then, we can continue this conversation. If you have questions for me or Charles, go to our community.tanium.com site and find the GoTanium show there. You've got a forum where we'd be happy to answer questions and interact with you for more information. Also, let me uh, put up my title slide here. We have a, a handy dandy link for you here, bit.ly slash Tanium on Linux, which will take you to the installation docs. If you have any questions about where to go, what to do, uh, to get Tanium on your machines. We'll take you straight to my favorite website, docs.tanium.com, to the install guide there. So also don't forget the links in the show notes below. Take those out. And you know what? This is a YouTube show, and I have tried really hard not to say like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. I figured you already knew that part, but sure. Like the show, subscribe if you like, so you can get updates on, on when we're uh, publishing these shows. And until next time, go Tanium.